Hi guys, it's Ashley here with G, the G. hairstylist. <laughs> I already had a briefing on why I'm wearing this mask, whatever, my lips fucked up because I got a piercing. But anyways, we're here today because he's going to show you guys how to make a wig and shit from like start to finish because I don't know. So he's showing me too, fuck, hopefully I can reenact it. So yeah. So we're going to start with teaching how to bleach the knots on the frontal. So for the bleaching of this frontal, what you will need is, of course, your frontal, a mixing bowl for your product, a lightener of your choice. Mine, of course, is Schwarzkopf. I like to use Trendy Developer because it's a slower process and it's guaranteed to lift every night. And I like to use hairspray to hold the baby hairs back. Along with that, you'll need a whisk to mix up your product and some spatulas. I don't use brushes because brushes soak up the product. These actually distribute the product evenly. And a few pieces of foil for when you're done to process your lightener. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start by spraying your frontal down with hairspray. Turn your frontal around, and then you start mixing your product. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna take your lightener, Just under a scoop, should be fine. And I'd like to start with just adding a little bit, because you wanna, you want your lightener to be a real thick, kind of pasty consistency. So you still wanna add a little bit more. I'll do little by little, so I can tell the consistency. This is still a little bit too thick, so I'm going to add a little bit more. So you want it to be real thick, but you want it to be nice and smooth still. So keep mixing until all the lumps and clumps of lightener are out. Once you get it to the consistency that you need, you take your spatula, just mix it up a little bit more, and then you just start by spreading it. Apply a little bit of pressure so you make sure that you're getting it on the knot and it's not just sitting on the lace. And I like to use the big spatula because it gets more product on. I like to use a smaller one to get it into the spaces that I need to get it into, and for the hairline especially. Once you've got the majority of your frontal covered, then you go in with the smaller spatula. Once you're done putting the bleach on your frontal, turn it around and make sure you got every knot. And as you can see, there's still some that I didn't get. So you will go in and reapply that to make sure you've got every knot. So you're gonna go in and get whatever you didn't get before. Cause you wanna make sure all these knots become invisible. That's how you get a flawless, natural looking, what lace type of hairline. All right, once you're done, going through and checking all your knots and you're happy with your application, you're going to get your foil. Place it on your frontal. And set your timer for 25 minutes. G, let me set the timer, because I'm more than capable of doing that. Yeah, you would think. So we're gonna wait 25 minutes. So now after your 25, 30 minutes, you're gonna take your frontal and rinse off all the lightener. Just gonna look to see how the knots are looking. Looking pretty good. Now instead of me using purple shampoo, I'm going to actually tone it. I don't really like the, the result that I get from purple shampoo, so. I'm going to tone it with a 10 or 9A. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some 10-1 from Wella to tone the knots on this frontal. And the only reason why I like to use toner instead of purple shampoo is because purple shampoo really does not take out the brassiness in the knots like toner would actually do. So what I'm doing now is just taking a little bit of the 10A and putting it in the bowl. You don't want to use too much because you don't want to waste product. So I'm just squeezing out the rest of what's in here, which like I said, you don't need much. 
Okay, so as you can tell, I didn't use much, but it's gonna work. I'm gonna take a little bit of a 10 developer, because you don't need a high developer for this, you're only toning. Let me just mix it up. And remember, it's 10A. 10A is gonna knock out that brass, that orange. If you wanna tone with the 10B, 10B will knock out any yellow, and that's gonna give you a more white looking root. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take the toner and just put it all over the lace underneath. Cause you wanna knock out that brass. Nobody's, nobody's scalp is orange. And like I say, you don't wanna use a lot cause you don't wanna waste product. Wasting product is a waste of money. So there you have it. Then you're gonna let this sit for about 15 minutes until it, you see all the brass come out. So now it's been 15 minutes and we're going to rinse the frontal and the toner off. And the reason why I like to use toner um, as opposed to purple shampoo is because toner will actually get the brassiness that you need out and give you that realistic scalp look. As you can see, there's no brass, just invisible knots. So we're gonna rinse it. And I don't really like to use shampoo because I feel like it strips the hair. But for frontals, I will use Olaplex shampoo. It's a bond multiplier, so it's gonna leave the hair very nice and soft. Now I'm gonna take some Olaplex conditioner, number five. And with this product, a little goes a long way. And as you can see, knots are pretty invisible. So now after we've bleached, toned, your frontal, you're gonna tweeze it to give it that realistic hairline. What you're gonna need is, of course, a brush to comb out the hair, something to part your hair with, your tweezers. I got these at Cosmoprof. Um, you can get some tweezers at Sally's and some water because you wanna keep it, the hair kinda wet. So you're gonna start by spraying the hair down with water because you wanna see what you're gonna be tweezing. Comb it back. So as you can see, the hairline is a pretty, pretty plucked already, but there's a really harsh line that goes around, so you wanna get rid of that. So what I like to do is I like to go around. There's two parts, there's this part, that part, and then your third line. Not all frontals are the same, so you go according to how yours is already done. So I'll go around and I'll take out what they call baby hairs. And you wanna do this first cause you wanna make sure that you're not taking away from the actual hairline. And again, like I said, not all frontals are the same. This frontal has a little, a little bit of some pre-plucked to it. So we're just gonna take all that out. All right, so now since you've got all that out the way, you can kind of see where the actual hairline of the frontal is, and it's very dense. That's too dense. Nobody's hairline is like that. Now, you don't have to start where I'm starting, but I like to start from the sides and the soft spots, which would be here and here, because that's where everybody's hairline is naturally thinned out at. So once you part it out, smooth it out so nothing's in the way. I don't feel like this frontal is very dense. I don't need to go all the way through it, but I will just to kind of take out some of the density still. So then make sure that your tweezers are going this way. Cause if you go this way, it might cause it to rip. So you want them to be faced down this way. And then you just start. Some people like to go fast. I like to start off slow, get a nice flow. And right away you can see where your hair is coming out at and then you can move on from there. 
this doesn't matter because you want to have some spots in your frontal that'll make it look natural. And you can kind of already start it seeing it thin out. So what I'll do is I'll just part a section and work on that first. Comb out your hair and just put it to the side. So just kind of keep working on that section for a little bit. The sides really don't need a lot of tweezing because they're already kind of thinned out, but you still wanna go in and take some out because you don't want it to be too dense. Some people might say that this area right here will be too thin, but honestly, once you take the baby hairs and pull it back, it gives you that naturalness that you need in there. I mean, we still haven't plucked the front part, but as you can see, like it's already looking nice and blended as opposed to this area where it still looks full and unnatural. Yeah, so you guys know, like when you're plucking, it's it's normal to get a lot of hair coming out. Absolutely. One thing that you wanna pay attention to is once you're going in and you're customizing your frontal, as you can see, it's still kind of dense right here, but once it's you feel like it's starting to look kind of thin and you're like, oh my God, I'm taking out too much, pull the hair forward and just continue to go back because the most of the density is in the back of the frontal. So you that's where you want it to look more natural. And wherever you see like a dense hard line is where you kind of want to go in, part it out. My, my tweezers are special because they have a little comb on them. Mm -hmm. So you just part it out and you kind of just lightly keep going back. All right, so now you can kind of spray it down, comb it back and kind of take a look at what you've done so far. If you like it and you feel like you want to keep tweezing, keep tweezing. I feel like I've tweezed enough. I like for it to be very nice and, and thin in the front so it looks very natural. This is gonna allow me to still bring down some baby hairs, lay them out however they need to be laid. So we're good to go from this point on. So now um, for the construction of the wig, you're gonna need your wig block, a mannequin stand, and your wig cap. You can use any wig cap that you like. You can use an actual wig cap. You can use a dome cap. It's really up to you. But for today, this is gonna be our cap of choice. Has your elastic straps, very nice and ventilated, so you can get air through there. Your client's hair can still breathe through the braids. Once you get your wig block on your mannequin stand, you put your cap on. You're gonna want to use some pins to hold your cap in place. And I like to stretch it a little bit just to give it some Cut it some slack for when you take it off your mannequin stand. And I like to pin it at the bottom because this is a part where I'm not going to sew any tracks on, any wefts. Once you have your cap on, you want to go back in and measure so you know you have the right measurement. And so this seems like it's about right. The client's head is about 21 inches, so that's what you're going to measure it at. Sometimes you want to go a little bit further just to kind of give it that space for it to contract and go back into place. So that's kind of how it's going to look for you. Take your frontal that's already been customized and you wanna lay it on your head. Bring it to the front just a little bit, passing the hairline, because ideally that's where the, net, the client's hairline is. And you gotta remember, this is where the ear is. This is behind the ear. You lay it on the cap and you wanna bring it down a little bit. Make sure it's center. And wherever the end part of the ear goes is where you wanna pin it because that's where you're gonna cut your frontal at. So once it's pinned, kind of look at it, see where it's at. Where your ear meets with the cap. You want to turn it around and do the same on the other side. And you want to give it some tension, not too much because you don't want it to not fit your client, but you want to give it enough tension to where your frontal is laying flat all the way across your cap because you don't want no lumps. So once you get it laying flat on the other side, it's where you go and 
you pin it at, right where your ear and the cap meet. So right there. You lift up your front zone, you can see where it's at. Because eventually this is gonna be cut off anyway, so you don't need that. Now when you get to the front, your front is gonna look a little, little loose in the front, but that's perfectly fine. You want it to look like that. What I do is I tend to just pin these little areas away so they're just tucked away and not in the way. Fold. And you wanna take pins and just place a few on your frontal because that's where you're going to want to sew it into place. And you don't need a lot, just a few. And so now you wanna take your needle and thread. Once you loop it through, I'll take my string, tie a knot, roll it around my finger, and just twist it down, pull, and you have a knot. Take your needle and thread, and you start by going in underneath through the front, so you can hide that knot. Just lock it into place. There is like saran wrap that protects the, the wig block. And sometimes I'll like pick one up with the needle, but it's okay because it's saran wrap so it easily just rips. I don't know exactly what type of stitch this is. I've been told that it's a blanket stitch, but whatever stitch this is, this is what works for reinforcement. Some people will do some extra shit and they'll go around the needle a few times. To me, that's doing too much and it creates a, a, a bulky knot. If you're consistent with your stitching and close with your stitching, you'll have a strong, secure stitch. For the frontal, you wanna make sure you stitch quite consistent throughout the whole thing. Cause that's where you don't want any bumps, lumps, or pieces sticking out. So now, once your frontal is nicely stitched down, you're gonna go in with your bundles and we're going to be installing three bundles of Deep Wave 26, 24, 22 with a 20 inch frontal. The best way to reinforce your bundles when doing any type of install, I like to sew through the weft so it's reinforced and you just pull it. I like to start up here because eventually this is going to get cut off. You got to remember, this is a strap. You do not want to sew on the strap because then there won't be, they won't be able to tighten their, their, wind, their weight once it's on. You start. Some people say don't sew on the stitch. I, st I sew on the stitch because the cap is pretty stretchable. And just how we stitch the front so you stitch the one. And since we have three bundles i'm doubling the wefts now what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna do the fold over method because we don't want to cut the wefts we want everything to stay intact so there's no shedding of the hair so i separated the wefts and i went up just a tad bit stitch a little bit and you want to lock it in by going in and wrapping your thread around the needle once you do that you can take your needle out and your thread is in place. This is gonna separate the two, but that's what you want because you want it to be nice and flat. Take your needle, put it in where you stitch so you can reinforce that. Stitch through your one weft, and then you pick up your next one and bring it up to it. As you can see, the two are separated right here. But now you want to bring them together and start your double weft again. Okay. Okay. I would have never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, you want it. You want to always do a, a fold over method with only one piece of the track. Because if you try, if you try to do two, it's going to be too thick and it's not going to lay pretty flat.
All right, so now that we are done constructing the wig, what we do is you take it off your wig block because now you're gonna cut off the, ex the excess lace that was on the cap. So you wanna get close, but not too close because you still wanna have something for your stitching to hold on to. So that's what you would cut off. That's the part that's under the cap. So this is what your wig is gonna look like inside. Once you are done. Now it's time to apply, mm -hmm. install all three bundles.